Hello, everyone. Uh, really excited to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me for this uh, session again, Akila and Rinju. It's a pleasure to be here and meet everyone. Um, uh, hello, everyone. I'm Sagar, and uh, I work with some of the largest advertisers with Google, uh, helping them uh, get the best out of uh, ads measurement uh, GA and how they can grow their brand uh, or increase conversions, right? So today, while this topic is slightly heavy, uh, which is Google Analytics, uh, I'll try and make it as fun and easy as possible, right? So bear with me. We'll start from the basics. If you don't know what Google Analytics is, this session is for you. If you know slightly, you know, if you are like on a scale of five, if you are at one or two, uh, or three, you know, have a fair idea of what Google Analytics is. This session is again for you because I'll I'll try and take you to closer to four out of five, right? If you are at four or five, probably this session is uh, will not be as helpful to you, but it'll help you clarify some of the basics uh, of what a session is or what a new user is, etc. So it'll just help you refine the concepts which you probably already know, right? So can I get a quick quick reaction from everyone in the chat about what your level of comfort is with Google Analytics on a scale of five? Five being highest, one being lowest. All right, we are getting a lot of reactions. Fair. So. We're mostly at one. Oh my God, <laughs> zero as well. No problem, Ayush. I'm with you. Uh, I'll ask you some questions if you don't mind. <laughs> All right. We have a few people at three as well. So Ses India is at three. Pragati is at three. Okay, fair. Uh, I'm I'm noting your names in my mind, and uh, I'll I'll ask some questions uh, as we go along. Fair. Uh, if you have any, any questions in the session while I'm presenting, feel free to use the chat box, write your question. I'll take a pause and also answer these questions uh, between, between sections. Right. So whenever you have a question, feel free to write it in here uh, or even unmute yourself. It's not, not a problem at all. Uh, more interruptions are good. Right. So this is the philosophy that I'll start with. Uh, all right. And uh, the way I've divided this session is essentially some bit of uh, theory and some bit of practical. And uh, uh, thank you so much for uh, PHFI for uh, being a volunteer. Uh, they had given us access to their Google Analytics prior so that we can actually do a live UI uh, you know, practice session uh, with a live account. Uh, which is which is currently being used by PHFI, right? So thank you so much, PHFI team, for that. Uh, all right. So this is the thing that we'll probably cover today. Uh, what is GA? How can NGOs and nonprofits use GA? How do you set up uh, GA? What are the basics of GA? And how do you navigate a GA report, right? Cool. So what is GA? So G Google Analytics is a free and powerful digital analytics platform. Uh, it's absolutely free. Uh, you can actually go to google.com slash analytics and set up a property, etc. I'll, I'll, I'll talk you through how do you do that. But it, it's absolutely free. It allows you to understand who your users are and how they are interacting with your website or app. Or if you have both, you can also get combined reports for web and app, right? Uh, you can understand where folks are coming from, which pages they are interacting most with. And most importantly, it allows you to activate these insights as well, right? So if you see, you know, social media is working well, what you can do next, right? If you see 
let's say a particular segment of audiences is performing well, say 18 to 24 is working really well for you in terms of, you know, maybe getting more volunteers from 18 to 24 age bracket, or you're getting more donations from 35 to 45 age bracket. Uh, it allows you to put these insights into action as well, right? So which is the most powerful thing? Because a lot of tools just stop at getting you insights from the data which is available, right? Uh, but it's important that we also convert these insights to actions, which is where Google Analytics helps you as well, right? Okay, so I have to shuffle between two. So these are the questions which GA will be able to give you answers, where folks are coming from, which campaigns or which channels are most effective. Should I work on my SEO? Should I work on my paid channels? Should I work on my socials, uh, et cetera? Um, you know, how many visitors, uh, who is more likely to donate or volunteer, how effective my uh, ad grants program is, et cetera. Uh, so at this point in time, I'll want to take a pause and ask you this question, right? That take a moment and think about what metrics does your organization care most about, right? And as you think about that, you will want to convert these organizational goals into web goals, which you can measure from your website. Right. So what are these goals which your organization cares about? And you will have to translate it to the goals which you can measure from your website. Right. So it could be volunteer registration, it could be blog posts, you know, time spent on blogs, blogs, blog posts, etc., or uh, number of donations or you know, uh, the overall amount of donation, et cetera. So what does, what do, what does your organization cares about, right? Uh, I want to listen to what you have to say in the chat. So feel free to use that. Uh, I want to understand what are the things which you are meaningfully looking to measure. All right, so I'm seeing student engagement statistics converting our website visitors to retail donors. Okay, nice, Costa. Most popular pages on the website, yes. Digital presence, digital presence. Okay, says India, you want to probably unmute yourself and tell me what do you mean by digital presence? Okay, can I explain what I have want to do? Or is Ayush this side? Yeah, Ayush, sure. Yeah, so basically we have a web app product and we want to sort of track student activity and engagement in terms of log in, log off time, how much time a person spends on a particular video or a PDF document to check actually is the student actually learning or is it just browsing and going off a screen to another screen? and to basically then sort of develop prompts to improve the learning outcomes that's in the bucket what i was sort of just wanting to put out all right so there are parts of this ayush which will be able to achieve through ga uh, because ga works on a on a collective data not on individual data so you will never be able to point out unless you do advanced ga setup uh, you will never be able to point it out or link it to to a person. It's all a, the data which you get from GA is aggregated always. So you will get aggregate statistics of which, uh, what is the average time which a person probably, uh, or a thousand people viewed a video on your website. What is the average duration of, of that video being watched? If it's a one minute video, probably you'll get a number of say 15 seconds. Right, something like that. So those things you'll be able to get, but you will not be able to tell which student viewed it for how much time, unless you do a very detailed user ID mapping, which which is of course out of the scope for today. But it's something which you want to take note. You can and learn more about this. Right. So that is a user ID level track tracking. 
which is not part of basic GA setup, but it's a part of advanced GA setup. Uh, there is demographics. Yes. Increase awareness through Ox approach. Volunteer registrations, donations coming from visitors. Yes, so I think we'll be able to answer a lot of questions which you folks have uh, through this training, right? Okay, so how do you get started? How do you get started? Like I said, this page is for web developer. Uh, you can actually also do it yourself. You can create a property. You can go to google.com slash analytics. Uh, let me paste a link here. Yeah, so you can go to google.com slash analytics and click on, uh, you know, get started today. And, uh, you know, just register yourself. It will pick up your Google Ads, uh, Google Gmail account. You will create a new property, which is essentially name of the website or an app which you have. You create a data stream. Data stream is essentially allowing Google Analytics to read data from your website. Right. So how do you do that is when you create a property, it will ask you. It will give you a code. It will give you a code. Right. If it's heavy, I'll simplify this for you. Right. Just stay with me. It will give you a code snippet, which you don't have to worry about. You can actually pass it on to your developer. That code snippet needs to be put on every page of the website in the back end. Right. And then it will automatically start collecting data and give you beautiful dashboards out of Google Analytics directly. Right. Why this step is needed is because when you put this code on your websites, uh, all, uh, all the pages of your website, Every time the website loads, Google Analytics also receives data from your website, right? And it tries to get a number. Uh, it tries to identify where this user came from. It tries to identify what kind of device the user is, uh, you know, uh, using to log on to your website. It tries to identify what is the aggregate age bracket which a user belongs to, what is the location, etc. So it'll give you all of these things in a beautiful dashboard uh, through Google Analytics, right? Cool. Now we'll quickly move ahead. In dashboards, when you see dashboards in Google Analytics, you will have to know a couple of things, which is dimensions and metrics. If this sounds like French to you, stay with me. Uh, because I'll try and make it as simple. Uh, dimensions are anything which is written in English, right? Uh, what do I mean when I say that? It, it means it could be what city the user is coming from, uh, what is the source where the person came from, whether they came from organic search, whether they came from paid search, whether they came from social media by clicking a link on social media and then visited your website, etc. So what is the source? What is the browser? What is the OS? So anything which is English is called a dimension, right? Like, what is your gender? So it's a dimension. Gender is a dimension. Um, and the second thing is matrix. Matrix is anything which is a number, right? So how many sessions, how many users came from a particular, you know, source? Uh, oh yeah, you're right. Aroyan social, you're right. Why only English? Yeah, it, it could be any language. You're right. Uh, Dimensions is any language which can be expressed in language. Matrix is a number which is, which you can count. Right? So users, page views, exit rate, etc. So these are the matrix. Right? Uh, combination of dimensions and matrix is called a dashboard in Google Analytics. Right? So before we learn about dashboards, I want you to understand of all the goals that you told me earlier, uh, which are your organization goals, how you can convert those organization goals and measure it in GA is something that I'll talk about first, right? So what are the kind of goals which you can measure in GA, right? So these are broadly four kind of goals which you can set up in GA, 
if you want in one on one sessions which uh, renju talked about earlier renju and akila talked about earlier we will help you set up these goals should you need help in one on one sessions which will happen after this right so i'll encourage you to register or or uh, you know express your interest should you want a one on one session later with with a googler right so what these goals are again coming back to these goals there are four kinds of goals which you can set up in ga one is destination kind of a goal destination could be if someone uh, let's let's just see uh costo said he cares about converting our website visitors to retail donors right so how do you identify a donor versus a non non donor a simple website visitor right so i'm assuming when someone makes a donation they will be reaching to a thank you page right so that thank you page could be a destination which you can set as a goal right so what this will do is identify okay there were 1000 users who came onto your website but five of them became donors right so google analytics will be able to give you this data by itself that out of 1000 people five people reached the thank you page and that's that's your destination that's the goal which you have defined and that's why you have five donors it will also be able to tell you where these five people came from right which city which uh, you know uh, age bracket which browser uh, through which channel whether they came through organic so you should work on your seo whether they came through paid so you should work on 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 paid media etc so destination is one kind of goal which you can set up in google analytics yes kind of um sorry am i audible absolutely yeah just a question here how would you how would google get to know their age bracket because i'm assuming the person would not if the person has not filled out a form explicitly mentioning their age yes so it's a good question we don't know it's an assumption and that's why it's a aggregate level data you will never get to know that if one per, i mean statistically significant number of people have to have filled the form before you get this demographic information right so if if the number is less than 5 you will probably not get to know at all if the number is uh, more than 10 15 20 50 then there is more likelihood that you will get to see this data point uh, does it make sense that if they don't fill out a form that specifies their age how does like i understand how you can track an ip address but how does it get age gender these 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 are uh, these things about a person if that's not explicitly filled out in a form somewhere yeah yeah no that's fair so it doesn't kind of like i said it's an it's a assumption it's not a so there is a difference between being deterministic and probabilistic it's a probabilistic answer it's not a deterministic answer okay yeah cool yeah nilima uh i'm just uh, there's a very basic doubt that i have as far as i understand google analytics is to uh, you know understand the behavior of the visitors to the website right it doesn't work on uh, for example duplication of data on a website or anything like that from our side like does that also it does does that ha- does google analytics analytics help us in those things as well so you will have to define what duplication means because uh, i'll give you an example so when when we define a goal of say donation right if a person is making donation twice then would you consider that as a duplicate or not okay uh, no that is not what i was asking that would be um, you know uh, up to the visitor of the website let's say uh but i am talking about the like our for example our uh, ngo maintains this website and we have a lot of knowledge um you know based uh, documents and stuff like that that we have that people can download that 
sort of uh, if if i if i'm suppose uh, uploading two dif- two uh, i mean the same document twice does it look at that if you're uploading two documents twice then yeah and if i'm uploading the same document twice so you are a you are a ngo you you're talking from an ngo's perspective or someone who is downloading by filling up no. a form from an ngo's perspective from an ngo's perspective you are uploading a document on on your website right twice right so what what is it that you intend to measure out of this nilima no so that's why that's why i wanted to understand what exactly it is if the it does it analyze data that you have uploaded or does it talk about only uh, you know the things that you can calculate out of visitor behavior that was the original question yeah yeah so this is not a website maintenance tool this is a i mean uh, web analytics platform uh which okay. helps you analyze people's behavior on your website versus a website management tool such as wordpress right okay uh, so Got that it. is a key difference okay got it yeah sagar you have a couple of questions in the chat box okay yeah uh is it machine learning age prediction yes praveen that's right it's a prediction it's a prediction mechanism you're right so so the answer is that it is a probabilistic number versus being a deterministic number in deterministic uh you know answers you are sure that this is the age of the person but when you're not sure you do a probabilistic analysis and say that you no know, it could be there are few people uh, who, this person's behavior looks like belonging to 25 to 35 age group right so these are the things which you are able to do predictively uh cool there is okay so we talked about destination as a goal uh second is uh i use just a second i'll 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 complete the goals second is duration based goals right so if your ngo is into uh creating some videos i mean if you have videos on your website if you have some exciting blog posts which you have written and for you as an ngo it makes sense to have mature, most of the people uh, you know go through your website right or watch that particular video for a particular duration then then you can also set this particular goal in google analytics right you can say that i want i want to understand all the people uh, for my ngo uh, let's say anyone who is spending more than 1 minute on my website is something that i consider valuable right so you can also set up a goal in google analytics without any additional code all of these things are without any additional code or uh, you know you requiring to know programming at all so you can set up this goal and then google analytics will be able to tell you that out of 1000 people these are the people who uh you know spent more than 1 minute on your website and again of course everything about them where did they come from uh which channels they came from organic which cities etc uh third is uh pages per screen this type of goal is specifically useful for for news websites so if you are into if you are an ngo which has a lot of blog, blogs right and you want people to read at least two or three blogs which are on different pages so you can set this up as your goal as well that in one session person should see at least two or three screens right so uh, the closest example to this is say you go to a news website after you finish scrolling they will recommend you a couple of more uh, you know uh, news articles for you to read you click on that again you finish reading there are two more options so these are the companies who care for people being engaged with their website for a longer duration and the fourth kind of goal is event goal which is similar to uh, what is mentioned in the chat which are advanced kind of uh, you know goal measurement which is scroll measurement uh, 
you know someone watching a video for uh, say five seconds or someone just playing the video so these are the things which are slightly advanced this requires a bit of a code modification on the website right good let me go through other questions can i set a goal uh, as how quickly viewer is able to get an information and exit. Exit by clicking an external link that has actual information. Yes, Praveen, you can do that. Uh, it's a, it'll be an event goal uh, because it's based on an external click. So short answer, yes. Yes, Ayush. Yes, Ayush. Ayush, I think you raised your hand. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I uh, had a internet went off for some time. So my 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 question is that uh, mainly what you're saying uh, is referring to a, a site. Uh, does that sort of language is interchangeable to say it's a it could be any kind of a product, uh, a web. Uh web app or a or a mobile application or anything like that you would integrate and sort of track data yes ayush because uh, the point is that you have if once you set up these goals you will get the results right an app also once let's say swiggy they have a thank you page or all done after you place an order right so there is a destination there is duration there is pages per screen, and then there is specific events. So all of these things exist in app as well. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, that, that's my only question. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Yes, Kana. Yeah, I have a quick question. So our website has multiple pages, and each page has different types of content. So if you want to know which, which pages are the most popular, would that be a destination goal? No. So there is a standard report kind of for that in order to identify which pages are most popular. I'll take you through that report in uh, in our UI walkthrough session. OK, thanks. Yeah. So a uh, good way to think about this is it's, it's a good question kind of because it's I want to segregate you seeking information versus you setting up a goal which is important for your business, right? It's important to identify and segregate both of these things. Uh, so the goals page will help you set up, essentially tell Google Analytics that these are the things I care about, measure it, right? These are the things which are important for my business, like what a donation, uh, you know, volunteer registration. Uh, like someone mentioned, you know, clicking, clicking an external link. Right. So these are the things you would want to uh, tell GA that these are the things which are specifically important for my business. Right. There are few things which are important for all businesses for which there are standard reports, like which pages are most common uh, or most visited, most exited, etc. So for those, there are standard reports. But for your specific NGO's use case, goals are something which we need to set up. Fair. Uh, one last heavy slide. Bear with me. If you are at one or zero on Google Analytics, right? If you understand this slide, you will easily be at three or four, right? So that is the starting point. I want to probably give you an intro to this slide with. If it looks heavy, we'll take a breath. We'll take a deep breath. I'll take you through this. It's very easy, right? But if you understand this one slide, like I said, you will go from zero, one to at least three or four, right? So be with me on and this slide. Enlarge it a bit. Yes. You're not able to see the text in the box, in the columns. I don't know if I can. Uh... Oh, no. There is an issue. Let me see. Better? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, let me hide this somehow.
Okay. So like I said, there are dimensions and matrix, right? This is one of the reports of Google Analytics, which we are going through. All the reports in Google Analytics will look similar. If you understand this one, you will have understood almost everything, right? And we'll go step by step, right? This particular report, in this particular report, we are looking at acquisition. This is an acquisition report, right? What does acquisition mean? Where did people come from, right, to this website, right? Uh, people could have come from uh, paid search. People could have come from display ads. Display ads are the ones that you see on the side. The smaller, you know, once you visit Amazon, you forget something in cart. Uh, you see the same product elsewhere, right? So those are display ads. Paid searches, simple Google paid result. So there are multiple ways through which a person can land on the website, right? So one is paid search. The other is display. Third is organic search, which organic listings are the listings which you don't pay for on Google. You just get clicks because your SEO game is strong. Right. Fourth is direct when someone is writing the name of your website directly. Other is other referral. Does anyone want to talk to me about referral? I'm looking at people who who marked three. I want to take a stab or should I go up and call out? OK, let, let me try. Pragati Tripathi, do we have you? Yeah, you have me. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Pragati. You want to take this question? What does referral mean? So this referral is actually um, capturing uh, people who are organically coming through your social media. Mm, no. 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 Actually, this is that's why I've given myself three. This one is something which is uh, something which is not very clear to me. But basically, this entire portion is mapping all the audiences that are visiting and what what is the source of all the audiences? Where are they coming from? Right. Correct. Correct. Uh, You're right. Uh, so everything else is very clear. Referral is one uh, which could be coming from SEO activities from different a third party website. Yeah, so now you are there. Yes, uh, so yes, it yes. is coming from. So referral is uh, when your website link is mentioned on someone else's website, and yeah. someone uh, people are clicking on that and coming to your website. It's coming so, from a backlink, which is available it, on. Yeah, it's coming from everything that's coming from another backlink. Perfect. Yes. So that is referral, right? Uh, seventh is thank you so much, Prakti. Uh, seventh is email. Seventh is email. You sent an email out to someone. People clicked on the link and landed on your website. Cool. And eighth is social. Social is organic social. You know, you're posting on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, etc. You have your link of the website. People click on it and land on your website. Right. So these are dimensions. Right. We are looking at acquisition report, which is where did people come from? And these are dimensions because this is English or any other language. These are written in English. That's why these are dimensions, right? Now, when it comes to. Yes, uh, yes, Kosto, uh, you're right. When it comes to matrix, sorry. When it comes to matrix, matrix and any Google Analytics report are typically divided into three buckets, right? Typically divided into three buckets, which is A, B, and C, right? Again, okay, be with me. Uh, we'll just go through A right now, right? So A is acquisition. Acquisition meaning three things, users, new users, and sessions, right? OK, so now anyone, uh, OK, let me, before, before going there, I think there are lots of questions. Uh, so yes, yes, our referrals, the backlinks, yes. Uh, uh, the more backlinks you have, the better will be your SEO. Is it true? Yes, that's right. What is other? Other is uh, all the sources which do not fall into these seven sources mentioned here. Uh, 
SEO is search engine optimization. Uh, we'll talk about, we'll not talk about that in detail at this point in time, but it allows your website to rank organically on Google search quicker. So let me do this. So when I write Google Analytics, is my screen visible? Okay. So these are organic results, right? These are all organic results. And these are these results show up because there is more of authority of this particular website across the web. Versus if I write buy medicines online, you'll see these are paid results which actually start with ad. So these are paid results. And then these are organic results, which don't start with ad, right? In order for your website to appear on top of organic results, you will need to do SEO, something called a search engine optimization, right? Cool. Uh, what is the other question? Pragati, can we find out which websites the referrals are coming from? Yes, we can. I will go through uh, the. We'll go through that question in okay. the UI walkthrough. Sure. Uh, could you explain display acquisition again? Uh, yes. So display ads are type of ads which you see uh, if you go to. Let me. Where do I show? Let me. So display ads look like this. It, it they show up on your uh, app somewhere. So it's like this. So when you visit a website, um, you have some of these website, uh, I mean, banners looking like this. On your app as well, when someone, uh, you know, blocks the full view of your app, that is also a display ad, right? Okay. All right. What is the other? Uh, could you explain display SEO? We explain example of other. Uh, we'll go through. I think I will go through other. Uh, yeah, we'll go through that in in UI walkthrough. Cool. Okay. Now let's quickly go to A for acquisition. Okay. We need to understand A, B, and C. Acquisition. Uh, so you see three things in A. Users, new users, and sessions. Uh, okay. Now, anyone wants to take a stab at uh, telling me? Let's 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 take an example of uh, Navid. Navid Riaz. Uh, Navid has opened uh, his own website, right? Uh, called navidriaz.com, right? And uh, Navid actually sent link of his website to everyone in this group, right? And Navid, because Navid is a GA expert, he has installed GA on the website already, right? So he's able to get all of these dashboards, right? So now Navid actually posted the website's link in this chat, right? And let's say Kanav clicked on that link, right? If Kanav clicked on that link, what is the number of users that Navid will see on GA dashboard? That is the question. One. One, I guess. Yeah, so feel free to write it in the chat, you, OK? You should, uh, one won't be displayed even. Because you mentioned that at least five should be there. No, so you will not get demographic data for that one, yes. but you will get count. Okay. You will get the count. Okay. Yeah. The counter will start running. Yeah, counter will start running. Okay. okay. So okay, uh, pra Pragati is saying number of people clicked. So yeah, only one person, one person clicked Pragati. Only Kano clicked. So it will. Yeah. So one is the right answer, right? So he will get one user in his dashboard. What will be the number of new users? One again. One again. OK. So if you want to, uh, henceforth, if you want to write an answer, you can write like this. So one is user. 
you know, one comma one. So I'll understand because there are three things in A, users, new users, and sessions, right? So you can write one comma one comma one. So I'll understand you mean one user, one new user, and one session, right? Okay. Uh, what is the number of sessions which, which Naveed will see? One. That's right. Okay, so let me un let me explain. Uh, I think Pragati is is uh, fairly advanced. Pragati, do you want to tell everyone what a session is? The website runs. Um, that is. So if I'm opening the site multiple times, it'll be as many times I'm opening, that will be counted as different sessions. So it could be just one user and it could be 10 sessions as well. Perfect, perfect, absolutely perfect. So when someone is opening a website once, it is counted as a session. And that session lasts for 20 minutes of inactivity. So if someone is inactive for 20 minutes and then again, they become active, it is counted as another session, right? So. Now, my question is, fair. So first time when uh, Naveed sent the website address here and kind of clicked on it, the counter would look like 111, which is one user, one new user, and one session, right? Now, my question is, uh, kind of went to the website, you know, uh, and uh, gave some feedback to Naveed that, hey, Naveed, I observed, you know, uh, your your uh, lead form, uh, lead form on the website is not actually appearing properly. Some of the fields are missing. So can you quickly take a look and fix it? So Naveed said, oh, uh, thanks, Kanav. Thanks for the feedback. Uh, yeah, I had not checked it uh, in, in this manner. So let me fix it. So then Naveed fixes it from the back end and then he gives message to Kanav that, hey, Kanav, I fixed this, right? Uh, do you want to have a, a look and see if there is anything else which I can do better? So now Kanav visits the website again, right? Uh, now what will be the count which Kanav will see, or sorry, Navid will see on, on, on the dashboard? 0, 2, 2, 2, 0, 2. Okay, so before everyone, before everyone starts answering, these numbers are cumulative. These numbers are cumulative, right? So whatever has happened in the past has happened. When someone else visits, it, it's just, it just adds to the account. OK, so people are saying 1, 1, 2, 2, 1, 2. OK, nice. So let's see. Chandana Ashadeep is saying uh, 2, 1, 2. Uh, do you want to come off of mute and tell, tell everyone why? Uh, what I uh, think is because first time he had uh, uh, he had clicked on it, so that is counted one. Then second time he clicked on that again, so counted as two. So first time when he had uh, clicked, that that was new user one. But for the second time, he is no more a new user. And then sessions two times since he had clicked, so two sessions. So that's why two and two. Is, is that correct? Okay. No, it's absolutely oh. perfect. Thank okay. you. Okay, thank you. That was just a guess. <laughs> no, no, that means you understood the concept. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So stay on, stay on, Chandana. So now, uh, now what happens is that Kanav looks at the website and says, oh, now there is something else which I found out. You know, your address is not written. Your phone number is not correct. I saw the web page, your phone number is not correct. It's a default phone number, which, you know, anyone when creates a website, there is a placeholder phone number, which gets, which gets shown up. So it seems it's that. Uh, so then again, uh, you know, he gives this feedback and, and then uh, wants to get it resolved, right? So now what happens is uh, it, it then gets resolved, right? So now, so now Naveed gets back to Kanav, telling that, you know, it's now I fixed the phone number issue as well. Now, now I hope now the website is 
okay to go live and I can actually share it with everyone in the cohort, right? So uh, now Kanav again visits the website for the third time, right? Now what the what the count will look like is something that I'm keen to learn. What the dashboard will show. People are saying 313. This is the toughest question, by the way. <laughs> if you have been following till this time, 313, 313, 313. I'm wondering, we have 87 folks, and only six or seven folks are responding. Uh, so either I'm a bad teacher or the concept is too hard. <laughs> Okay. One one three. Praveen is is countering everyone else, saying I'm still at one one three because I'm not able to understand what a user means. Very good question, Praveen. So let me explain to you what user means. User is a unique combination. Of, uh, user is anyone who is visiting the website. Okay. Uh, and user is equal to new user plus returning user, right? Now, your question could be, what is a new user? New user is a unique combination of browser plus device. OK? Praveen, does this answer your question? Hey, sorry, I have unmuted since you asked me directly. Um, um, so um, how do you, how did Google identify that the, the, the user and because user and session looks like if you are not able to identify separately, they will be the same number. So how do you differentiate user and session if there is no way in which Google can identify uh, every time when somebody comes here, it is not from the same person, same machine, same IP, something like that, right? So that's something which I am not able to identify. How do you separate user and sessions here? Now, I mean, all the answers which have come, 313, everything means that user and sessions are the same value. How do you separate these two? Yeah, so first, let me tell you, the answer 313 is not correct because user and session are not the same, right? The correct answer is 213, right? This is the correct answer. And I'll take you through why. On sessions, are we clear? You have no problems there, right? You are aligned on three as number of sessions. Cool. So I think everyone is aligned on three, right? Number of sessions, there is no problem. Everyone is also aligned on one, which is new user, right? Are we aligned on one as new user? Fair. User is returning user plus new user, right? So you could, at max, if it's only Kanav who is visiting the website again and again, the maximum number of user count possible is two, not more than that. Because Kanav, for the first time when he's visiting the website, is a new user. For the second time he's visiting the website, he's a returning user. Right? So number of users is equal to new user plus returning user. You cannot return twice. Right? That's why when it's just one person, the number of users is capped at two. Are we all on the same page? So I have a question. Yes, I wish. So you said new users equal to returning user, uh, sorry, users equal to new user plus returning user and new users who's come for the first time and it becomes a returning user because he's come back again, but the new user doesn't increase, correct? New uh, user doesn't increase. So yes. now, uh, for example, you took an example of somebody's name. So for example, Mr. APCD is a new user first and then he comes back on the website as a returning user. But how do you know, how do the system or the Google Analytics know that this is a returning user uh, when he, when it's a person, it could be logging in from a different system, from a different device, from a different IP address. How does that all sort of play into consideration? I don't know if that's in the scope of questions, but yeah. 
Yeah, no, no, it's a very valid question, Ayush. And here, for the sake of simplicity, I did not bring that much complexity to begin with. Here, we are assuming that when Kanav is visiting all the time, or three times he visited, right? All the three times, he used the same device, same browser to visit this website. Then only this is possible. Does it answer your question, Ayush? If Kanav uses a different device or same device but different browser, then he will again be counted as a new user. So new user is a function of device and browser combination. OK, 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 got it. Cool. OK, I hope this concept is clear. Uh, um nice. Sagar, you have uh, you have uh, two questions two people have raised their hands uh, oh, do you want to take them now yes yes please yeah. yes kanav um thank you sagar for that explanation so if we continue this exercise then let's say 10 times then it then the count would be 2 1 10 2 1 11 2 1 12 that's how it goes on okay that's Thanks. right Absolutely right. Thank you for getting the concept, Kana. <laughs> yeah, we have uh, someone else uh, raised their hand. Kostov, please. Hi, Sagar. I just had one question. Uh, so if one user enters a website and it, it's logged in for a while, and somehow he gets uh, like uh, the network doesn't work and again he gets the connection like uh, will it count two sessions or one session if there is there has been a disconnection it will be counted and the web page reloads it will be counted as a second session okay thank you okay uh, sorry, yeah, yes uh, so yeah the same thing like disconnected or probably i do refresh because it was not loading will it count as a new session plus a new user not a new user user you you've already been there right yeah because when you said like, user is going to be a new user plus a returning user right like when i refresh does it count as a returning user yeah then it will be a returning user yes yeah but the count will come in user as well right yes count will come in user so it will it will cap at two for you yeah okay thanks uh sagar you have some questions in the chat box as well okay uh <laughs> No problem. Google Analytics, uh, Google Analytics, and Google Site Kit. Google Site Kit is with respect to uh, console, etc. So that helps you get indexed on Google search. Uh, Google Analytics is a holistic web uh, analytics platform. Uh, what about different ID from the same browser and device? Different ID? Oh, uh, you mean uh, ROH and someone? else is logging in do you mean i mean did i get your question right someone else logging two people using the same device to log into a website different ip address doesn't count as a new user no uh, it's a it's a device and browser combination only which will count it as a new user uh, Different ID, same browser. Uh, Google for Google Analytics perspective, it will not count as a new user or user ROEN uh, unless you have set up advanced tracking, which I discussed briefly earlier, which is user ID level tracking. I have another question on referral before you move into behaviors topic. Uh, yes, please, Pragati, tell me. So, Sagar, um, why the confusion on the social media thing? I wish I could show you. When I'm looking at my Google Analytics, uh, i.instagram.com uh, is showing as, uh, you know, from referrals. So that's why, and, and there are many like that, m.facebook.com, and these are all being captured in refer uh, referrals, Pinterest, facebook.com. All of these are being captured in referrals, and that's why I thought it has some connection with social media, but I don't know what. Yeah, yeah, no problem. So it's a case of uh, 
misattribution misattribution it's not configured properly pragati ah, okay uh, okay so some of the some of sometimes we have to configure it properly so that it shows in the right channel uh, you will see a lot of times others also in uh, you know showing up a lot of social media right so it's a combine it's sometimes because these domains keep on changing like everything else remains the same like y.facebook.com so initially m.facebook.com etc so these domains may keep changing okay. uh that's why it it leads to issues like these that's okay. why it it's important that when we set up ga uh we do we take care of these domains and include it under specific header okay got it but we are not going to talk about that part on this call right no uh, i'll strongly encourage you to uh, reach out to one on one session uh, after this sure with with a specific googler if you are interested in solving for this yes okay sure okay. thank you so much no problem hey uh, sagar i just so sorry to interrupt you just needed to take a uh, account on these uh, or names that i'm going to read out to just confirm the name of the organization um so uh who uh, the names that i'm going to read out can you please write the name of your organization you represent in the chat box amarjit singh ajay kartse sampa khan mohit gupta smita kulkarni neha parveen pragati tripathi mukesh and w shridhara uh, naidu banda tejaswari uh, rakesh kumar and uh, shravasti datta yeah please drop in the name of your organizations in the chat box thank you so much and sorry sagar no problem at all all right now i'll move to behaviors behavior is how people are interacting with your website right you will see three metrics there right one is bounce rate which i'll not talk about because it's going to be deprecated uh pages per session and average session duration right uh pages per session is fairly straightforward how many pages a person is uh you know going through in your website in a particular session right that is pages per session number of pages divided by total number of sessions and then there is average session duration for how long a person is engaging with your website right so these are the two matrix which are important from behavior standpoint right and it's important to note that you get these matrix for every channel so that you understand that from referral people are coming and spending on an average about 3 and a half minutes uh, about 3 minutes versus someone coming from paid search spending only 30 seconds right or someone coming from email is spending about 1 minute right someone coming directly is spending only 44 seconds so it helps you get this like i said data to insights and you can also put these insights to action at a later stage which i'll talk about but you can clearly get these data points and insights that which channel you need to focus your energies on in order to scale your uh, ngo or business right are we clear on behavior matrix page path yes cost we can not of a visitor we can find uh, at an aggregate level like, like i said individually it's very difficult kind of uh, you are interested about bounce rate uh, do you want to take a does anyone want to take a stab at bounce rate what is a bounce rate uh, there are two questions uh, what is a bounce rate and uh, whether a high bounce rate is good or bad or will i have to find out a three person from the chat okay arjun arjun singh <laughs> sorry to put you on spot do we still have him Yeah, I'm still around, but I'm not uh, sure. I think I need to downgrade myself. <laughs> no, no problem. <laughs> Sorry to put you on spot, Arjun. No problem. Uh, Costo, yes, please. Yeah. Uh, so, if a visitor visits your website and leaves 
before like say 10 seconds so he'll be uh, added as a like one bounce rate mm. so why is it a percentage uh, say say uh, five users visits your website and say one visitor leaps before 10 seconds it will be like uh, one one divided by five yeah very good you are absolutely right now the second question uh high bounce rate is it a good thing or a bad thing oh praveen has an interesting answer everyone else is saying bad i am interested in what praveen has to say please praveen it connects to my previous question if the person is able to find the resource quickly and exiting it's good for me that's yeah. that's the goal yeah you're absolutely right absolutely right uh, high bounce rate is not a bad thing at all uh, say you are a help website right you want people to get help quickly right you want them to land on the page where they get the help right and then they go off no problem uh, so high you want a high high bounce rate in that case you don't want people to you know go through four or five pages to actually get to where what they are looking for so it's a good thing uh, but if you are uh, if, if you have three four clicks if you are shopping website clearly high bounce rate is a bad thing so it depends on the use case depends on the goals so will not uh, stereotype bounce rate uh, high bounce rate as good or bad thing a uh, very important thing for any business is with respect to conversions yes ritika we can say that uh, come to conversions this is very interesting because uh, this is what all of us should care about right okay is there a way which i can probably make this 175 percentish okay so conversions is important because it tells us the goal which matter for your business you converted those goals into website goals now right and how are you doing with respect to that is something which we which you will get to know in conversion matrix right which is a third kind of matrix so all of these people came from all of these channels how well did they convert eventually right so while paid search brought about 63% of users it also brought about 36% of conversions right uh, organic brought about 6% of users but contributed 36% in conversions so i should be working more on my seo uh, then direct brought in about 3% of users and contributed to about 23% of conversions right so these are the channels which which you should be probably focusing on right so this data gives you an insight into which channels are converting most for you right uh, let's look at social social brought about 738 no conversion at all fair no problem but it also brought about next to nothing visitors right so probably we can do why are there three columns in conversions yeah interesting so there is three columns in conversions because one is conversion rate one is number of conversions and fourth is value of conversions right so that's that so value meaning you can have five donors but all five donors are not same right someone may be don donating 5000 rupees someone may be donating 500 rupees so that's why value is important as well conversion rate is important as well because you ought to understand of all the sessions how many are converting into into the goals which are important for your business uh praveen uh, i hope i answered your question uh, it's tied to sessions cool okay sorry sorry sagar i had a small question in the second column there is a percentage and in the first column of conversion there is also a percentage why, why are the two percentage different types of percentages uh, 
in the conversions column the first column has a percentage oh, and the okay, second okay. column also has ah okay got it so uh, the, even uh, the, all the three columns have percentages right so let me explain what this means so this percentage the first one it is number of conversions divided by number of sessions all right this column is my screen visible yes yeah okay then the percentages which you see here are essentially what percent of total conversions is coming from this particular channel which is paid you see 31 so uh, the way i would put it put it as is 85 is the total number of conversions 31 came from paid search which is 36% of total conversions does it make sense yeah it makes sense for the second column but i'm not clear about the first column first column yeah, this one yeah, same here same here even i'm not correct about that this one is 31 divided by 9,28,789. This is 31. This 0 0.03 is 31 divided by 99,000. That is, so conversion rate, conversion rate is conversions divided by number of sessions. A higher conversion rate would be better because we want more people to convert through less sessions. Yes, higher conversion rate is better, but higher conversion rate may not always be the most scalable way for you to grow your business. Why so? Because it is likely that, uh, let's see this, right? Organic search is giving you 85,000 visitors at this point in time and about 99,000 sessions, right? How will you grow your organic spends or how will you grow your organic traffic through SEO, right? But it is not a very fast method to grow your organic sessions. It's not a quick method to grow your organic sessions, right? So although it has the best conversion rate, it may not be the most scalable channel is the point which I was trying to write. Does it make sense? Uh, kind of. Yeah. So that's why you see this particular business is also focusing on paid search because despite low conversion rate, they are able to get 36% more conversions from there. Right? If they stop doing paid search, they will not get this 31 customers, right? So how do so, we reconcile the low conversion rate and high like percentage of customers coming from paid search? Like how do we reconcile that fact? No, so you don't re you don't reconcile the fact. You you take a business call or based on NGO, you can you have a blended cost of acquisition, right? So you consider that, and as long as it makes sense. For you at an overall level, you don't get into you, you arrive at how much you can spend at max, right? And that's how you rationalize. Right. So to give you an example, if the these 85 customers are giving me four thousand four hundred dollars and that is my revenue, and if I have 50% margins, I can easily spend 10% of the money in acquiring these customers overall, right? And because I'm not paying anything on organic, I can put all that money to paid search or paid social, et cetera, right? And whatever I'll get is incremental. Does it make sense? Yeah, that part makes sense. Yeah, so you have to live with because all the channels are not going to give you similar conversion rate. And the channels which give you the most conversion rate, of course, you will try to scale it to the max, but there is a limit to which it can be scaled, right? And then you will be compelled to look at other channels. So do we just look at the channel which has the highest dollar value and focus on that? 
No, so the method in that in there is you select the channel which is giving you most conversions, try to scale it to the maximum, then look at the channel which is probably giving you the second highest you know, conversion uh, rate. Again, try and scale it to the max. And then so you progressively go about maximizing the channels which are giving you the best conversion rates. And that would be the second column. No, no. You look at the first column, the channel oh. which is giving you the maximum conversion, you try and scale that. Right? Then you move to the channel which is giving you second highest conversion. Try and scale that to the max. So that's 0.04%. That's the sorry, 0 0.06. That's uh, the highest. That high is no, other. That email. is other. That is other. So okay. then there is direct. Now, how do you grow direct? Again, right? Direct is someone entering your website. You know, it's not in your control, right? So then you look at the next channel, which is giving you the highest conversion rate, and then try and scale it. That's how you progressively go about scaling your business in the most profitable manner. Make sense? Okay. Sure. Thanks. All right. Cool. Uh, what else? Praveen, trying to understand why new users is greater than users. New users is greater than users. 104. Yeah, this, this error sometimes happens when you are uh, looking at different or longer time periods. It should not happen when you're looking at a smaller time period. So plus minus one or two percent is expected. This is all actually we have uh, from uh, from the theory point of view, uh, and we have covered all the questions. So we'll quickly move to the practical aspect. And again, uh, thank you to the team at uh, PHFI who have been kind enough to share their GA access uh, with us beforehand. And what I've done uh, in the meantime, we connected somewhere in Jan, and what we did was to create goals for them, right? Uh, PHFI has a website, phfi.org, right? And uh, they essentially wanted to understand how many, they had a couple of goals, which I tried to figure out. They wanted to understand how many people are, uh, you know, uh, Looking at these IIPHS, uh, they wanted to understand how many people are uh, looking at donating and what is their donation funnel like. Right. So these were the two goals which we configured in GA. Right. And as you can see from Jan 19 to Feb 15, we'll be looking at this data. Right. So this is the data. And again, I'm in acquisition side channels. So you can see these folks are not doing any ads as such. So that's why you don't see any anything in ads, right? But here, if you look at, again, A, acquisition, B, behavior. Here you will see uh, new users is less than users, right? Because we are looking at a smaller data point, uh, a smaller 30-day. Uh, How much is it? not last 30 days let's look at last 30 days last 30 days so it would typically be lower new users will be lower generally than users so it's 15000 users is 17000 so you can understand about 2000 users are repeat right bounce rate is 62% uh, everything good everything is looking healthy now look at this look at the conversion right so now i had created these goals for them right which is iiph page visit then uh, donation step one, donation step two, right? So when you have these one-on-one uh, -on -one calls with, with a Google mentor, you might want to get these goals created so that it helps you to measure what, what matters for your business on GA versus you having to create manual reports, et cetera, right? So now you can see they have, you know, 
organic search, they have the highest conversion, almost highest, uh, 23.9, and, and they're getting about 3,800 conversions out of 15,000 sessions to IIPH page visits. Let's look at what's in referral. Uh, this was the question, and there was also a question of what's in other. We'll also try and find that out. So you can click on referral in order to see which, yeah, so see, these are the pages. Even email is coming here, good jobs, etc. So this still needs to be configured properly. Indeed, from Indeed also, they're getting some traffic. Then let's look at others. What's in others? So the pocket saves in Siksha. Let's see what's there. Not so much of a traffic. Three users, two new users. OK, nothing very important here. There is no point worrying about two, three users. All right. So now this is goal one. Let's look at other goal, which is online donation page, step one. So out of, again, 15, thousand people on organic search, 15,000 sessions rather. Let's see how many converted. OK, nice. So 47 people have come to donation page step one. Let's look at step two. So total 72 people have come to step one, right? out of which 47 are from organic. 21 have come from direct. OK, uh, step two, see only one person has gone to step two, which is from direct. And if I increase the time, do I see more? But I guess I did the setup somewhere around Jan 10. So going back in time would not help. Yeah, no. But that's fair. So you see, you are able to get these things at the tip of your finger. There are also other uh, you know, reports which you can look at. But broadly, this will remain same. Acquisition behavior conversions will remain same. Say you're looking at device level data, right? That how many people are coming from mobile devices versus desktop devices, right? Why this is important? Because from your website creation standpoint, we typically see uh, you know, your website, how does it look on, on a larger screen? But reality is most of the people visit your website from smaller screen, right? So it is important to make sure that our website, etc., is compatible with, with smaller screens as well. So let's see, uh, you see interesting split, right? 47% of the traffic is from mobile devices. Right. So one can clearly say that uh, IIPHS website is mobile friendly because on mobile, they have a very high conversion rate as well, almost 40% more than desktop, right? So, which is good. And 56% of their conversions came from mobile devices, which is again good because 47% of the traffic came from mobile devices. But 56% of the conversions came from mobile devices, which is extremely good. That means their website is mobile uh, compatible. Good. Uh, you can also look at demographics, like I said. So this will, again, be at a very high level. It will not be granular. And this is probabilistic data. So what percentage of users, you can see this, overall 31% of the users they're getting from 18 to 24 age bracket, et cetera. 42% uh, are female, 57% are male. And if you, you can also do this, you can also compare overall website users 
with people who have completed a specific goal right so which is let's 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 do this uh, filter users which include goal uh let's pitch goal completion let's say uh let's look at donation page donation page uh step one donation page step one Per user. Hey, Sagar, uh, yeah. sorry, quick time check for you. Um, I think we're overshooting a little bit. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, please com complete your uh, this thing. Yeah. Yeah, sure. This is the last one, actually. I have to go through no problem. So, uh, goal, donation. And uh, you will also be able to compare how does I mean, how do behaviors or demographics of people look like when uh, versus, you know, overall website? Oh, so because the number is very small, see, age-wise distribution is something you're not getting, but gender distribution you're getting already. Uh, and now you can compare it with all website users. Right. So now you see people who are at donation page, 61% are female. Let's see. Blue is, yeah, uh, donation. 61% are female. Oh my, this is a stark difference. It's a stark difference. If we look at overall website, you see only 42% are female, but on donation page, about 61% are female. Right. So one can clearly see that females are more likely to donate versus male counterparts in PFHI's case. So these are the insights which you are able to drive and probably you can convert these insights to action when it comes to your offline targeting or even when you have linked your Google Ads account with Google Analytics, you can use these insights and create audiences to go through uh, in Google Ads as well. So that's where I'll take a pause. Uh, I think uh, Vishwanath, yeah, feel free. I to ask you regarding the, you know, can, can we map the users by the area, by location wise and any kind of such thing? Yes. So you can do it via location as well. So here you will find the report. Thank you, thank you so much, Open City. So let me remove this. So now you can see from which country you're getting how much audience, right? You can also see it by city if you want. Thank you. No problem. Really, yeah, thank you. yeah. No problem. Probably. Okay. Any other question? Saga, there's a bunch yeah. of questions. Yeah. Chat. Okay. Oh, sorry. Oh. Uh, fill the form. Where are these three goals configured, Praveen? So I'll encourage you to answer, get an answer to these questions and probably also configure the goals for yourself. 
under this section in your one on one session and go to goals and like i said there are four kinds of goals which which google ad and google analytics will let you create uh, let me pick any any one for now so it could be a destination goal duration goal pages per screen goal or event goal right and we talked about what these goals mean earlier you can edit the earlier goals as well yeah like this all right any other question um i think meghna had a question Sorry. um oh uh, yeah it was about the editing and the adding to my goals i think i think That's what you just demo right now that answers it for me thank you problem. no problem meghna yeah ritika uh yes hi sagar hi uh, i wanted to ask you that uh, is there a problem if we keep many goals or what is it like there is a limit of about 20 goals per view uh there is no problem as such if you create many goals but i'd encourage you to think every time you create a goal whether it is linked with your ngo goals or not right it should not be something which is good to measure it is a must measure right uh, so yeah. sorry to interrupt uh, i like to add to this Uh, like we have many pages in our website so we uh, we want to like uh, look for uh, how many newsletters uh, are being read how many are going into a recruitment page so we can have many goals right based on the pages so will that interrupt in our analytics not at all not at all in fact you can get some of the standard things like which pages are being visited most Uh, by default you don't need to create a goal so let's look at site content and it will tell you which pages are uh, are the ones which are which from where people exit the most right or people visit the most so these are the pages which are visited most by people right uh then these are the pages which are exited most which contribute to most exits right so there are some reports which are already configured in ga yeah, okay yeah thank you so much that answers my question okay thank you no problem um if you all had any other questions you can raise your hand and ask your questions to sagar all right um just a quick heads up there is a form that's available in the chat box so you can fill in the form um it in case you would want to get a one on one mentorship we can take a use case for your organization and set up goals for you all and you can have this one on one mentorship with a googler um and to help you set up and implement google analytics for your organization so please do sign up for the um for the mentorship program um we will also be sharing the recording of this session with you um thank you so much sagar this was a stellar session um you took all the questions with so much ease thank you so much for always uh, you know supporting tech for good and always being a part of our mission uh, thank you everyone for joining us sagar it was fantastic having you again thank you so much thank you so much everyone please keep spreading the good work uh, really delighted to be here with all of you